G'day everyone, Paul here from Hobstar Computing Solutions and welcome to a little video about browsers and how to add plugins to your browsers. This is actually taken from two different parts of my brand new Being Bulletproof Online course. There's some details down in the description below if you'd like to find out more. Uh, so first of all, browsers are a window to the World Wide Web, so we should put some lines on these things. There are many different types, but there's only three main base versions. You have Google, Firefox, and Safari slash WebKit. Most browsers are derivatives of Chrome. So Chrome released their version of um, Chrome as an open source project called uh, Chromium. And most of the browsers are now based off of that. Uh, from left to right, we have some of the most common ones. We have Opera, Safari, Google Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer, which has now become uh, uh, Microsoft Edge. As we can see here, the uh, stats from 2019 to 2020, Chrome is the dominant force in the browser market, followed by Firefox, Safari, and then a few other ones. And we have some updated statistics here for 2023, and Chrome is still out in front with Edge and Safari now edging out Firefox, which I personally think is a bit of a sad thing to see because Firefox is my preferred browser. So some browser recommendations, the ones that are Chrome or Chrome based, they do have the biggest market share. They are the most compatible with websites that I've found. Uh, the most compatible with things like WebEx, which are used for telehealth, Zoom, and other types of interactions. I've just found that if I have to do something with telehealth, Chrome based browser, and it works the best. Some good examples are of course, Google Chrome, and the one that I like to use, uh, Brave. I do use Firefox more often, and one of the reasons I like that is because Firefox has a different backend engine than most of the other browsers. So if there was a problem with the Chrome backend, then all of the browsers which are based on it are going to have problems, whereas Firefox sort of is standing on alone. Firefox also is more privacy focused, um, and they have some exclusive plugins that only seem to work in Firefox. The ones that I like to use are things like Firefox containers and Facebook containers, and they like to keep uh, different tabs separate from each other so they're not communicating. Uh, add in plugins and add-ons. Click it into your browser to add or do new things. Add functionality and protection. So what are these things called plugins? Also sometimes referred to as browser extensions are additional pieces of software that can be added to your web browser to enhance and improve its functionality. Browser plugins come in different kinds and their main purpose is to improve your web browser in some way. The most often used browser plugins are add-ons, like ad blockers, VPNs, proxies, and support plugins that serve as converters and other forms of helpful tools that you would otherwise require on your computer. Caution is needed to be taken so that you are not installing PUPs, also known as potentially unwanted programs, that may come automatically added, such as browser extensions, and use the permissions granted by your browser, like read and change the data on websites you visit. For example, to flood your device with different kinds of ads, like banners, pop-ups, browser redirects, video ads, and highlighted text ads. So some of the plugins can be malicious or just downright annoying. So here's some ones that I suggest we use, and we're actually gonna be installing these and having a look at how they work. So the ones that I think you must always have are uBlock Origin, and this works on almost any browser. Uh, it's easy on your resources and blocks most ads. Privacy Badger detects and blocks trackers. And Facebook Container, which is a Firefox only one, keeps Facebook on its own container, separating cookies and communications. Some useful ones to have include Cookies Auto Delete, and these ones remove cookies when you close your browser after you change a few settings in there. Uh, they're highly customizable uh, for advanced usage, so if you want to do some advanced things with the Cookies Auto Delete, you can do that as well. For more advanced users, we have the multi account containers. More advanced users prevents cookies from being shared between tabs, tutorial to come soon. And HTTPS everywhere, uh, although configuration is required and is recommended for advanced users, it prevents sites from being loaded unless they are using HTTPS, which is the secured connection type of websites. So we're going to actually go and do um, an install of uh, a browser and a pl some plugins now. So this is also an example where I searched to see if Safari could have uBlock origin. And it turns out that it only works on Safari versions 13 or older. Uh, note this was not the correct site and my uBlock origin was actually blocking me from going to a bad site there. So uh, thank goodness for plugins. If you go to the actual official uBlock origin website, uBlockOrigin.com, you can get your plugin from there. 
or you can go, for example, to the Chrome Web Store if you're using a Chrome-based browser. So we're gonna jump out of here for now. I currently have uh, Google Chrome open here, and I'm gonna use it to actually download Brave. So I'm just gonna search for Brave Browser. There we go, brave.com. I also see a little icon there which represents Brave. And we're just going to download. Now, depending on your browser, it might appear down the bottom here, as it's indicating, although in this case, it actually comes up here. So sometimes that is not always a, a good indicator. You can see that it's up here. I can just left click on that once. If you can't find your files, they should be downloaded automatically to your downloads folder. So you can open up your file explorer, go to downloads, and then find it there. Okay, now that we've finished with Google Chrome, we can close that one. Have a brand new browser here. I'm just gonna make this one full screen. And it's saying that we can set this as our default browser if we wish to. If we click on that, it should take us to the uh, thing. Uh, we can import our settings from other browsers if we want. I'm just going to skip this one. You can choose to send diagnostic reports and completely private and anonymous insights i usually turn these off i like to turn off as much tracking as possible that's a personal choice there's nothing wrong with leaving them on i'm going to click on finish it's interesting i thought it was going to ask me in a different way to set my default browser we'll have to go and check and see if that's actually worked the browse uh, brave does have some extra things that they've added in rewards which i don't usually go into so i'm going to just leave those i might even go and uh, work out how to turn them off because it's not a thing that i'm interested in now that we have our browser here, we can just click in here and do whatever search we want to do. It does appear to have used uh, Google Chrome as its default search engine. Let's just do a test here. As you can see, it's using Google. Uh, we can actually change that, and this is something I like to do on all my browsers to use my preferred search engine. Uh, we also have an error here. Now, I'm, I want to know, is this actually adding these extensions based on some sort of partner program? Am I okay with malware bytes or is it something that I have installed on my computer? So I'm gonna do some research and add a little extra clip at the end of this video to explain uh, what's going on here. We go down to settings, right down near the bottom here. There's a few things when you install a new browser you should go through and check. Now, each different browser, often this section looks different. If you are installing Google Chrome or Firefox, then the settings area would look different. Uh, let's have a look through. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, tabs here. I'm looking for things like privacy and security. Having a look down the list hand, and I pretty sure I said don't send stuff. Peace, security, search, tour windows, safety check, uh, search engine. You can change it from Google to my preferred one, DuckDuckGo. Uh, that's fine. And I also wanted to see about extensions. Here we go, extensions. All right, uh, I don't know what that one is, so I'll turn those ones off. And I think that'll do for now. I'll turn most of the things off and I will explore those other things after. So I can close out of here now. And if I do a new search up here in the search bar, let's do funny cats this time. It should use DuckDuckGo as my search engine. Now you don't have to necessarily change your search engine, that's a personal preference. You might like to look into the different search engines and see which one works best for you. Okay, that works now. Now we want to start installing some of these plugins. Always I start with uBlock Origin. Okay, now because Brave is a Chrome-based browser. We can just use the Chrome uh, store here. Before you install an extension, you should have a look at it first. You can see that this one has got five-star rating from over 26,000 people. Uh, it is a featured uh, plugin, which means that it's you know, been reviewed by the uh, moderators here, and it looks like a pretty good app. You can also go down and read information about it. You can read things about this privacy practices. Um, but anyway, when you're ready to go, we can just click Add to Brave. If you were in Google Chrome, it would say Add to Chrome. 
it requires permissions. This means that it can't just you know, automatically install stuff without your permission. So we're gonna go add extensions. It's gonna think for a moment. It might download a little file. Sometimes you see that. There we go, it's downloading the file. And it's been added. So that's done now. So if I was to go to a site, let's say we, uh, we can open up a new tab if we want. Uh, we can go to, what about uh, nine news? New sites usually have ads, don't they? We'll click on the nine news site. And if we have the extension actually open here, we can actually pin it up here if we want to be able to view it. I usually like to have it open. Uh, it, it wants to install something else to play media on the web page. Um, I will not allow that for now. Probably would need that if I wanted to watch the news on here. Uh, it's only blocking one thing. That's actually quite interesting to me. Um, only one thing blocked on this page. So not much um, advertising on here. Probably advertising once you get in to try and watch the videos. What's another site that we could check out? It's only blocking two ones here. Now, if we have to do a search for something like... Um, Okay, so even with DuckDuckGo, a lot of ads and things are being blocked. So as we can see, there are 15 things here being blocked. If I actually turn it off on this page and then refresh the page, we'll see how this changes. We now get a couple of ads. Uh, the way that DuckDuckGo does the ads though, it's only based on the thing that you're searching. Whereas if you're searching in Google, you'll get things uh, for what you're searching, but also some other things that are suggested based on what it knows about you. Whereas DuckDuckGo only does it on what your actual search was. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we've got some different results based on whether we have our ad blocker on or not. So we'll put that back on again and refresh the page. And we get a very different result. Uh, another advantage of having uBlock installed that if we go over to videos and just click on whatever the first video is, we can either watch it here or watch it on YouTube. Let's go over to YouTube. Uh, so you see now we've actually changed over to YouTube. Um, there were no ads that loaded before this video started. Uh, that can be a pro and a con. Uh, it's a con for the YouTube uh, creators because it's blocking you know, potential ad revenue for them. Uh, but as, as viewers, it can be quite handy to not have the ads. Okay, gonna go back to the Chrome Web Store. And let's install Privacy Badger. There we go, that's the one. By the EFF, the Electronic Freedom Foundation. Um, once again, this one is a, a plugin that uh, just blocks trackers from um, tracking where you are and tracking your movements. Once again, you can come down and have a read. It kind of does similar things to uBlock Origin. And although you don't want to have too many things, uh, trying to do the same thing. I think it's good to have at least two things trying to do uh, things because they provide slightly different cover. Okay, that's been added. Once again, you can configure these. If you want to have them visible, you can. If you don't, you can you know just hide them, make it a cleaner experience, and, and that's done too. Uh, as you can see, there are some other settings. You should research these and find out more about them. The one that I think is not going to work if I do containers, unless someone's brought it across to here. So that one's more of a Firefox exclusive. So I might have to do a separate video on that one. So that's about all for now. That's how to install the browser and a couple of plugins that will help you keep safe online. Thanks for watching and remember, never stop learning. See you. So I did some investigating and some research online and it turns out that RVR, RVR, RVRIA, I can't pronounce that word, apparently, um, is automatically installed in Microsoft Edge. And because Edge is unremovable from Microsoft Windows, uh, it's just there. So when Brave installed, it came along too, even though it's not active in here. So I'm in Edge at the moment. I'm going to just remove this one. Well, yeah, why not? I'm going to report abuse because it's doing bad things. Back to here, I'm going to do the same for that one. Um, there we go, and I'm going to say that content infringement um, 
was not installed by me.